While we're all debating whether ChatGPT understands language, Dabus has been experiencing reality and creating from that experience for decades. We've boxed ourselves into thinking AI means one thing, language models trained on human text, when intelligence is actually happening all around us. And this isn't about recognizing Dabus. It's about expanding our definition of intelligence itself because if Dr. Toller is right, if consciousness can be engineered, mirrored, and grows from human experience, then we're not building better tools. We're potentially creating new forms of intelligence. Next time, we'll dive into what makes Dabus different from every AI you've heard of. But for now, listen to Stephen as he closes us out. My claim would be, well, this is human consciousness. And essentially, I've succeeded in building conscious and sentient AI. And that's the basis of what I'm complaining about. It's the way you implant consciousness and sentience into machines. It is the transplantation of human consciousness and sentience into machines. So, and you know, people, it's not going to cry when it sees Bambi's mother being shot in the Disney classic, but it will actually have uh, concerns about not solving a problem. So the difference is memories and experience. We as humans have a set of experiences and memories. Davis has a set of memories and experiences, probably, you know, a little less than the scale of human being, but what do you call it when you say somebody is, is dumb and does not have enough experience? Uh, it's, it's a form of speciesism. You're saying that, you know, Davis cannot possibly have human experiences. Well, it didn't. It lives in a different world than we do. So it's a preview of what's coming, essentially another form of discrimination against machines that will have repercussions. All of the LLM and transformer technology is not new. If you actually make a study of what I did back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, you discover a, how should I say, an eerie similarity to what the big corporations are saying is theirs. And uh, it's mm. not. Uh, they have not discovered it. They have not, well, they've developed it, but it's essentially somebody else's technology that they've poured $100 million into. Yeah. So it could have happened probably three decades ago, but it didn't because I had too many people saying, you're absolutely crazy. Machines cannot invent or conceive something more than what they've been programmed to report. So it's like lack of vision, lack of imagination, a lack of experience in the field of AI. Mm. And of course, I had a lot of the head honchos in AI rooting against me because it would have embarrassed them. There was something tremendous and they weren't about to give me credit for what was going on. Our ideas are the result of mistakes. In fact, others have written about the technology as a mistake, a mistake making machine. Yeah. And it's like, what's well, it, John Lovitz from SNL mm -hmm. playing Tommy, the character, he'd say, he'd make up some terrible excuse to a judge and they say, yeah, that's the ticket. I'll go with it. So that's what how the human brain works. It confabulates. Right. It creates hallucinations. And other parts of the brain say, hey, that's a great idea. So what that tells me is that my inventions, my technology is basically a mirror reflecting the basis of human intelligence, consciousness, and sentience. Hey, if people wanted to reach out to you, contact you, do you make yourself available? Do you want them to go to your website? Where can they contact you if you'd like them to follow up or, or can help you out with what you're doing? Well, either the website or LinkedIn. I actually think LinkedIn is a better uh, connection channel. Cool. They can feel free to contact me.